Good morning, people. This is Christian. This is a drawing that I will make in Fusion 360. And this is something I would like to share. This is like a basic exercise. This is very basic. If you're looking for more advanced stuff, watch other videos, not this one. Um, I do this because I've seen people ask questions how to get started with designing something from a drawing or from a real thing. People sometimes get confused because uh, a lot of videos just show you this drawing and then they start uh, creating the thing, just placing things on the screen. I do the same mistake. And the biggest mistake I do is that I'm too fast. I'm a very speedy person. I like to work fast. I like to draw fast, just get things on the screen and then fix them. And even if I do wrong, I just delete and start over. You need to learn to start over if you make mistakes. Uh, this drawing is not a good drawing because it's done by me. Uh, the dimensions are placed in really bad places like in most exercises but I do think I got all the dimension in the drawing at least that's the aim I had so I didn't drop any dimensions uh, this is going to be very basic I have fusion here I have already made a save so I know this order version 1 because I did resave uh, we start always by saving this activates the auto save function or auto recovery function with infusion that does uh, copies with a certain time limit i think it's five minutes in uh, if you don't change your preferences it's possible it's possible to change the the time between uh, auto saves basically up here uh, step number one which people sometimes think is, uh, is not necessary it's not really necessary in this case because we are making one part but as soon as you make two parts and want to place them together using joints or something like that, you need them to be inside components. It makes life a lot easier. So we're going to start by right-clicking the root level, create a new component, E1, part one. You can call it whatever you want. We can open up a browser and see it's now, now an empty part. The little dot out here is marks. This is the active component. So everything we do is going to stay inside this component. What's good with that is if we move a component, which you should do, you should not move the body, the sketches and everything else will move along. If you just create a body inside here with lots of sketches and then you move a body, the sketches will stay where you create them and the body will be somewhere else on the screen or in the 3D part of your design. And it can be really hard to find reference for dimensions and stuff like that. So that's why I create a component. Let's get in here this is a very basic shape as we can see step number one we'll look at something like this is from which view because i'm going to do flat profiles we have three views showing most of the parts yes you can have a view from other sides too but basically three views gives you all the information you need in most cases and in this case this gives me very little information the top view the side view gives me the angle of the face and the length of this extrude here, the same extrude length for the mid part here. But this front view uh, gives me the most information. It gives me the dimension of the two round parts, it gives me the angle. Uh, I can use this dimension here to get this, I can use the 45 millimeter dimension on here to get that top. So the only two, three dimensions I will not put in this is this extrude length, this extrude length and this angle. And as I said, extrude length, this means I'm going to use extrude to create this. That's the <coughs> version I'm going to do. So I need to create this profile. That's the starting thing I will do. So go back to Fusion. I'm going to create a sketch. That Fusion thing. Well, create sketch. Uh, I'm going to do it on a front plane. Makes it easy. I would, for now, not make it near the region point. I want it floating in the air for now. I'm gonna do like this, we can see things, I'm gonna move in a bit so we can see the drawing at the same time. <coughs> Sorry, it's early morning and my voice is not correctly adjusted yet. Uh, I'm gonna start with the bottom down here. I'm gonna do a simple line, L, or line two like this. Now I do the full length of this base. Uh, I will only create half of this. This is a metric, so I'm gonna be a bit lazy. I will only do half of it, but I do the full length. Why? Yes, we're gonna see when I put in dimension. I'm not putting dimensions right now. I will try to sketch a bit more before I do that. Still line tool, searching for the midpoint, do a line straight up. So this point up here is a, is a line from the mid. So this point up here is gonna be the center of these two circles. 
Let's do the circles. One circle, two circles. And we're gonna need another line, line tool or L on the keyboard for this edge up here. <coughs> Sorry about that. You're gonna see my mistakes today because I will not remove things. So, so you can see here, Fusion is adding constraints as we're working. We have a midpoint, we have perpendicular, we have perpendicular, and this is horizontal. That means that these will not rotate around at least, but they are not dimensioned yet. We will get to that. Now I do a line, I find a little square that tells me I'm hitting the end point of this line, and I go straight down. You can see it as dimension if I work nice and easily. Go out here, I get a perpendicular, and then down to here. This is the basic shape, it's not dimensionally correct in any way, I don't care about that. I'm gonna hit escape to turn off the line tool, and by that I basically get done all the shapes I need. Now I need to constrain and dimension. So. Coincident constraint to start with that we need to decide are we going to put the base on this on the radium point That means that this part will be resting on the Bottom on the XY plane or we can put the radium point in the center of the circle So it really doesn't matter that much the important thing. I want one of the radium planes going to move this one here the said uh, Y this one, or Y said, this one should go straight through the path because I'm going to use this for mirroring later, as I only make a half of it. But I think I'm going to use look at to rotate the sketch around. Uh, coincident constraint, I'm going to put this point down here and turn off and hide the radio for now. That gives me a nice stable thinking. This is now resting on the XY plane. That's easy for my brain to understand. It's the same thing as I put the part on a table. And, oh sorry, uh, now we can start adding dimension. Uh, you have dimension up here, or you can hit D on the keyboard. This here is going to be 1, 2, 3. Very strange dimension. It must be a very st stupid person that I'm destroying. Uh, anyway, uh, what else do we have? Uh, we have a thickness here of 11. So this here is going to be 11. I'll let Fusion think for a while can move the dimension out so very easy to see remember that if you get the dimension inside paths try to move them out or if it's easier to have them you can have them in here like that uh, we can dimension the angle these two that's 45 degrees you see we're slowly working inwards uh, we now have these two radius dimensions uh, so we do dimension just do the outside one first out here so the thing is i just clicked on the circle nothing else and fusion gives me a diameter now what to do i do right click select radius click and type in 25. i do this because i want to use the same numbers here that's in the drawing so if i pick up the drawing and look at my sketch i should be able to recognize the dimension the same with the one two three dimension down here i leave a line the whole way uh, constraint you use a midpoint constraint or the coincident for midpoint to origin point that means the length of this line is the full dimension here not any calculation that can confuse me later uh, let's dimension this here i'm going to make this now as a diameter if you happen to be, do this i'm just going to save uh, any dimension i have here if you by mistake do that you can let's see right click no sorry i have to turn off dimension tool hit escape and sometimes you have to click the screen there's a cancel you can do that's just sometimes a bit confusing right click this and say toggle radius now you get radius you can toggle it back to diameter in this way you can change if you have a diameter or a radius given in the sketch in the drawing you need to move it into your sketch right click toggle radius do not select toggle driven there's something totally different and this should be, I just double click it and type in 15. And we are gonna open up now, we can see we do not have a fully defined sketch. We can see that by things are blue. And that is this dimension here that was over here in the drawing. So the dimension from bottom here up to here, sorry, dimension tool down to here. This is gonna be 45. Gonna finish sketch. So, if we look at this, let's go back here. I have done everything on this half of it. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna open up again. We talk a bit more so you can see the dimensions. Uh, some people now say, Oh, use trim tool, trim away the lines. Yes, I can trim away the lines, but I don't need you don't need to clean up the sketches in Absurdum. 
it can be good to sometimes use very basic geometry if you need to go back and do some things you can see where you started it's up to you this is my preferred workflow gonna finish sketch and now we're gonna do some extrudes we're gonna do extrude extrude up here or you can hit e on the keyboard here's a small tip for you if you are inside a sketch and you are editing a sketch and you want to do extrude simply hit e on the keyboard fusion will finish your sketch and jump out and start the extrude command that's why it sometimes goes quite fast when i leave a sketch extrude let's start with this part it's going the wrong direction i wanted to go this direction it makes it easier for my brain because i'm thinking this way so let's not so i need to do this 35 and of course give me minus 35 to get him in the correct direction hit ok i need to extrude let's see what was the other part it was 50 extrude this here sorry e and that and this direction and i can type it in over here minus 50 hit ok join operations so we come together uh, as you can see my sketch stays visible the whole time if your sketch should disappear you need to go back and click on the eye i have changed that in my preferences that i have turned off auto hide of my sketch because i think that's very annoying i would like to use the sketch at least for two features sometimes just one feature but sometimes two so i now have uh, this basic body now we're going to turn on the side we have everything except the angle of his face so let's go hide the sketch for now uh, there are a couple of different ways you can use draft then you can do other things I'm just going to be a bit dirty because I'm going to use my move tool because I want to talk about that. You should really move, avoid using the move tool normally, but it's a really easy way of moving faces around. You do move. Uh, there are a couple of move types. Do not use free move. Free move means you can take things and move them around in all directions and set them pivot point like that, but it's not parametric. If you go back and change the number, it doesn't update it it just moves it to a new position it gets really confusing the only thing i want to do here is a rotate i want to rotate a face yes i want to rotate this face i want to select the axis i'm going to select the face the edge up here and we now have this and i can drag this around now the thing is of course the angle is calculated backwards uh, because this starts at 90 degrees and we want it to be 60 so it starts at 90 degrees and we do minus the angle i want i want it to be 60. i guess an error because i put in some bad numbers so by that we have 90 and we uh, it's moved 90 and we want it to back up 60. so well uh, sorry how, how do i tell you this are you with me it's 60 it's 90 down to here so this should be 30. 90 minus 60 is 30. so this should give us the correct angle like that sorry if i'm confusing sometimes i'll just show you some different workflows and with that we have made half of it what do we need to do now we hit s on the keyboard and find our mirror command mirror we want to mirror body yes object this object mirror plane you can select the face of a body that's good sometimes if you're not uh, on region plane in this case i'm on meridian plane so i should be able to click this uh, the bodies of they are touching each other so fusion will uh, automatically turn the operation into join it thinks you want to stay and i want one single body which we still have here. we have one body uh, you can select new body if you want two bodies but it should say join if you've done everything correctly hit ok <coughs> oh sorry uh, and we have made the part like that so this was some very basic moves or or steps and you can change this mess when like take this drawing find other ways to do it that's a good thing we do very basic exercises like this you can find a bunch of different ways to do this and people will say oh that's stupid to do it every way no that's how you learn to use the different tools in fusion so in this case i used extrude move and mirror and you didn't need to, if you don't want to move there's also the where are you the draft command that can move a face around in any angle you want so that's a possibility fusions is filled with different possibilities 
If you like this, please leave a comment. If you want to see me do more very basic stuff, and move over to other commands and try to show how I think of using them and my way of working. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, see you around, and goodbye.